السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ویلکم ٹو انادر کمپیوٹر سائنس لیکچر فار 9618 اے ایس لیول اینڈ ٹوڈے وی ار گوئنگ ٹو گیٹ اسٹارٹڈ آن سیکشن 9.2 دیٹ از الگورتھمز ناؤ دس سیکشن از گوئنگ ٹو ٹیک یو ڈاؤن اے ٹریپ آف میموری لین ایز یو وڈ بی ہیولی ریمائنڈڈ آف یور سیکشن نمبر 7.2 الگورتھم ڈیزائن فرام او لیولز اوکے So what exactly is an algorithm? An algorithm is a diagram or written sequence that shows all required steps to perform a task along with the order which must be followed. Many problems have more than one solution. Sometimes it is a personal preference between solutions to choose. Basically, however you write down, make an algorithm, either you make a flowchart or a pseudocode, there are always multiple ways of Uh, solving a problem often it's not a choice of which is the best option rather it is a choice of personal preference sometimes we, some of the solutions are more efficient than others however most of the time it is simply a personal preference sometimes one solution will be measurably better than others but whereas sometimes it would just be a personal preference an algorithm can be depicted using either a flow chart or a pseudo code a flow chart is a diagram that shows all required steps to perform a task pseudo code is a simple method of writing algorithm using english key terms which is not bound by the syntax of any programming language one thing to note a uh, one thing to always remember all identifiers used in an algorithm must be meaningful otherwise you may end up losing your marks pseudo code identifiers are usually considered to be case insensitive unlike identifiers used in a programming language flow chart remember that every type of algorithm be it pseudo code or flow chart should be written in the following general order first of all in the declare all of your variables then take input from the user always remember all inputs must be accompanied by prompts processing of data whatever you have required apply some formula some logic some uh, rules some calculation to it and then output the calculated values or whatever is asked in the question and then end symbols used in the flow chart are first of all we have the start or the stop symbol that is an ellipse then for input or output we use parallelogram for processes or functions we use rectangle formulas are also written over here for any subroutine library routine predefined functions we use this a double right side uh, a rectangle with double sides for decision make, making we use this this is a diamond shape for showing the flow of data we use the flow lines lastly we use this symbol as continuation to extend flow chart on to the next page a variable a variable is a, na- a memory space or a quantity named in a program whose value can be changed an identifier is a name given given by a programmer to a file data array memory space etc then we have the pseudo code it does what its name says it pretends to be programming code pseudo code is a simple method of showing an algorithm using english like key terms it describes what the algorithm does by laying out the logic in simple english key, key terms just like a high level language data items to be processed by the algorithm are always given meaningful names if you don't keep this in your mind you may end up losing your marks so all the variables and constants should be given meaningful names what are constants simply a memory space whose value does not change during the run of the program pseudo code is not bound by the strict syntax rules of a program programming language however in o and a levels cambridge papers we do have a formatting pattern that we have to follow if we want to score maximum possible marks plus always writing your marks always double check is kit always dry run it so that you do not make any unnecessary mistakes or any careless mistakes okay this is something new that you did not study in your o levels that is identifier table or how to create an identifier table a programmer should should keep track of the identifiers used in a given program using an identifier table so what exactly is an identifier table it is simply a table 
having just two columns in the first column we write the name of the variable and in the second column uh, we write the purpose or the description that what value is going to be held by that specific variable or array or constant so basically in the first column for any given program or pseudocode or flowchart you would write the names of all the arrays constants and uh, variables such as basically you have to write the identifiers of all the data structures that you are using in your program and then on the in the uh, column on the right hand side you have to write a very short description for it basically describing what value is going to be held in that constant that array or that variable for example see identifier name and description the examiner would usually give you a program or a scenario and then give you a blank table you are, will have to fill it up something like this name stores the name of a student count stores loop counter marks stores student marks total stores the sum of all marks entered average stores value of average marks percentage store the value of percentage gained by a student a generic or uh, pseudocode will use following programming constructs the first one is sequence programming instructions or statements are always followed in a sequence if you don't follow them in a sequence the results would be disastrous or the results would not be the ones that you expected either the program would not run at all or it would produce some uh, results which are undesirable hence order of statements are is very important in the flow chart we show the order of statement by using arrows something like this set a to 34 and then increment b in pseudocode we do it like this a is set to 34 then b equals to b plus 1 in structured english structured english is basically something new as well structured english is a simple description of how you can solve a problem by using very uh, basic english set 34 as the value of a and then increase b selection selection means the uh, decision making or the conditional statements it allows dead items to be picked out according to a given criteria in flowchart we apply them like this in pseudocode we write it like this in structured english we also use the if then and else keywords however uh, we don't have to write end if and we don't have to write mathematical or logical uh, conditions like over here we used a math comparison operator to write if a is greater than b in structured english we can simply write it as a sentence if a is greater than b that's it then we have repetition or the loops also called iteration it is the running of the whole or a part of programming code again and again either a fixed number of times or an unfixed number of times these are known as loops as well in flowchart we can draw them like this in pseudocode we can write them like this the repeat until loop or while loop or the for loop then in the structure Structured English, we usually write loops like this, repeat until A is equal to B, that's it. And then you write whatever is the task. Input or output for a program to be useful, the user needs to know what they are expected to input. So each input must be accompanied by a prompt stating the input required. In flowchart, we write it like this, or rather we draw it like this. In pseudocode, we do something like this, input A, print A, or something like input prompt a this would mean for this user the user would be shown what this message which is inside the inverted commas and then whatever value user input would be stored in this variable output message b this basically means first of all this word would be displayed on screen and then the value of this variable would be displayed in the structured english we usually use the keywords input and output and that's it for a program to be useful the user needs to know what result is being outputted so each output needs to be accompanied by a message or a prompt explaining the result similarly each input has to be accompanied by a prompt as well so the user know what he or she has to enter writing pseudocode from my structured english no set rules for writing <coughs> structured english it just needs to be easily understandable pseudocode usually follows an agreed set of rules but in structured english we don't have any limitations at all not even in cambridge when given a structured english description all variables need to be identified in an identifier table inputs or outputs can be identified from the wording such as enter read print write 
output etc selection statements will have words in the starting like if then choose iteration statements will have words like loop or repeat set is used to assign a value to a variable whereas calculate is used to for processes or for performing some mathematical calculation we don't write formulas in uh, structured english we just write the word calculate a rogue value is a value used to terminate a sequence of values the rogue value is of the same data type but outside the range of normal expected values for example if you have written a repeat loop that that would end when a negative 1 is entered so negative 1 would be the rogue value example question write pseudo code for the following problem given in structured english repeat the following until the number input is 0 now over here 0 would be your rogue value input a number check whether number is positive or negative increment positive number counter if the number is po positive increment negative number counter if the number is negative this is a very uh, good example of how to write statements in structured english or how to depict your logic using structured english now what you do uh, for solution the first thing you need to do is fill up the identifier table now as you can see you basically need to input a number then you need to increment the positive counter and the negative counter so that means these three would be our variables plus there's a hidden variable as well whenever we need to run a loop most of the time we need a count variable as well in order to keep the loop running so we have the number to store input number count stores the value for loop counter positive count to store the value of how many positive numbers were there negative count stores the count of negative numbers that's it that these are the four variables we need for this program now once the table is done we can start writing the pseudo code first of all we would declare our variables declare count number and uh, okay then we have the positive count and the negative count now all of them are all of them would have the data type integer as they are whole numbers then we start our loop repeat why we are using repeat because uh well the correct answer is not because it is given in the question the correct answer is because we have to start uh, stop when the input is is zero however if you want again this is a matter of personal preference you can use a while loop as well there is no harm in that so first of all we give a prompt please enter a number zero to quit then we input the number then we use a if condition if number is greater than zero then positive count equals to positive count plus 1 else negative count equals to negative count plus 1 until number equals to zero and we have successfully converted these structured english statements or this structured english into our pseudo code you can similarly do so uh, the conversion between structured english and flow chart or between flow chart and pseudo code or between uh, is structured uh, pseudo code and structured english okay the last thing we have in this chapter is step wise refinement one method of decomposition is the method known as step wise refinement a problem solving techniques that involve progressively breaking down a complex problem into simpler and more manageable sub problems or sub programs each sub problem is further refined and detailed until it can be easily solved or implemented example question use step wise refinement on following structured english instructions choose the shape either a square triangle or circle enter the lens or lens calculate the area output the area now how can you apply step wise refinement into it first of all in the first step says choose the shape over here the user has three possible options the user can either uh, choose a square a triangle or a circle and then that shape would be stored somewhere in the variable so we that means we can break this one step into three sub steps first of all input choice of shape then check whether it is square triangle or circle if it is one of them then we accept and store value in choice now instead of choice you can use another variable of as well you might want to call it as shape it's your choice then the second step is enter the length or the lens 
so input length if the square is in choice because for calculating area you only need one length a store value in length then input base and height if the triangle is in choice because obviously a triangle is going to have two values and then you store both values in base and height respectively 2.5 input radius if circle is in choice and 2.6 store value in radius so basically we broke this one step into six possibilities then the third one is calculate area now remember we are going to have at least six steps over here as well as we have three shapes so and all of them have different formula plus every time we have to store the value in the area variable as well something like this if choice is a square use formula length multiply by length if choice is triangle use half base into height if square if choice is circle use pi into multiply by radius multiply by radius or pi r square store value in area this is a way instead of writing six statements we uh, summed them up into just four then lastly we have to output the area so if this is simply just one task output the value stored in area another method of developing a solution is to decompose the problem into sub tasks each sub task can be considered as a module that is redefined separately modules are essentially just procedures and functions we have discussed it at the end of 9.1 as well this is just a reminder over here because once you apply subroutines basically uh, you get a better idea of how many modules and how many procedures or functions you would be needing for your actual program so these three lines are technically simply a reminder to you the examiner is not going to give you uh, simple questions this is a levels not get an easy a steric everyone level always keep that in mind the questions would be tough the uh, marking would be strict even if the question seems very simple you should not let your guard down that is why often questions are an amalgamation of 9.1 or 9.2 or chapter 10 and 9 combined or chapter 9 10 and 11 combined so you should be very careful that is why uh, time to time i'll be giving you reminders about things that you have already studied in a previous section or previous chapter that's everything you need to know for section 9.2 if you want to jog up your memories you can do so by going through my lecture of section 7.2 o levels and igcsc i'll uh, leave the link over here as well so you can quickly access it i hope you have understood everything if you have any problems feel free to leave it in the comments below secondly if you have not subscribed to my channel already please subscribe to it and uh, share it with your friends lastly if you need the hard copy of these notes along with the topical past papers or if you need computer science o levels or igcsc study pack or you need the study notes for physics igcsc or o levels you can use the form link given in the description below to place your order. I'll see you guys in the next lecture. Till then, take care. Allah Hafiz.